Hey, today I'm going to be talking about nylon eating bacteria, which is a part of dot point four point eleven, which says process and analyze information from secondary sources to explain a modern example of natu natural natural uh, selection. Cool. So let's just deconstruct this dot point first. Process and analyze. So when we hear that, we usually need to work with information from secondary sources or sometimes that even comes up with first hand investigations but let's go on so we're going to be working with secondary sources so technically I am a secondary source and this is doing the dot point correctly and we have to explain a modern example of natural selection so first off that brings me to what is natural selection so you guys must have covered it guys and girls must have covered it in year 11 and uh, if you haven't here's a quick recap natural selection is defined as the process whereby organisms which are better suited to their environment tend to survive and produce more offspring so I'm gonna give you a quick example of natural selection in modern times so let's go through a quick context based example okay here we go so as we know, nylon was produced in 1935. Nylon is a uh, synthetic polymer. Uh, so it's a synthetic polymer, and therefore, uh, bacteria shouldn't be able to eat it, correct? So this bacteria that uh, we found, nylon-eating bacteria, also known as Flavobacteria SPK172, a special strain. So this bacteria initially could not eat nylon. What actually happened is that Japanese researchers in 1970s were able to find this strain of Flavobacteria. Okay, researchers. The strain of Flavobacteria, which was near a nylon producing company uh, slash industrial area and uh, as I've said here th this bacteria actually eats the byproducts of nylon 6 production not just eats it, it kind of digests or decomposes in order to survive initially flavor bacteria is uh, cannot normally eat uh, nylon byproducts at all so these Japanese researchers what what they were interested in is that near a pond uh, n near this pond in this pond near an industrial area which produced large amounts of nylon, they found this Flavobacterium strain which was able to actually decompose nylon or the byproducts of nylon 6. And uh, this was mainly because of the three new enzymes in this actual bacterium strain. And they were, they were kind of interested because obviously if, if nylon has only been around since 1935, then some sort of natural selection must have happened in order for it to actually be able to digest or process nylon 6 byproducts. So I'm going to draw a simple diagram to illustrate this. So suppose this is our bacteria, flower bacteria, right? And we've got strains of nylon. Now, initially, these these strain these uh, flavor bacteria cannot eat these nylons because they just can't. They don't have the ability to. But what happens is that these keep on reproducing. So that will reproduce into two. That will reproduce into two. And then, eventually, a, a mutation hits where this new strain of flavor bacteria. So I was going to make it dark green is able to actually eat all this stuff or process all this stuff and uh as it as it as it can link to, as as you can see this green stuff this gr this green uh bacterium strain is different from these cuz these can't actually pro process this stuff so not 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 it's gone but this one it can actually eat uh process digest decompose this nylon 6 um byproducts and what we actually can say is that this is done through natural selection. So I'll give you a, a quick overview once again. So initially, we had this. So initially, we had this. And as you know, bacteria are really fast in reproducing. They don't really need much to do it either. So it, at a stage, these reproduced um, so many times that at one stage, they hit this mutation over here 
mutation, which allowed for the flower bacteria to actually uh, process these nylon strains. Okay, so these strands are also known as nylon 6 byproducts, but anyways, so altogether, what, what I'm trying to say, what I'm trying to get to, is that now these ones, these will die off. All the, all the flower bacterium strains which cannot actually process this nylon will soon die off. But this, this, little, stra this little strain here, it will continue to reproduce. And because of that, uh, there will be just more and more which can eat or process whatever, whatever you want to think in your head, uh, these nylon strains since there's no other food around. So overall, what has happened is that initially, there was a strain of bacteria inside this pond which had normal food that the bacteria could process. After time, the byproducts from the industrialization of the area, which produced nylon 6, uh, only ha uh, contaminated the, this pond with nylon 6 byproducts. And because of this, this uh, bacterium strain had to get used to or do anything it possibly could in order to survive and uh, process these strains of nylon, uh, the, I mean, these byproducts of nylon 6. Otherwise, uh, they just would have died off with no food. And over natural selection, through natural selection, uh, through a mutation later on, a uh, uh, bacterium strain which actually has the ability to process these nylons uh, is produced and from there onwards it just keeps on reproducing and hence we've got this bacterium, this flower bacterium which can actually process nylon. Okay, my, my explanation may have been a bit off but I will post links in the uh, description just to help you guys out and if you guys want any more information on this. Uh, in this dot point, you just need to know what you're talking about, and in my sense, there are many different examples. Uh, I've just taken nylon 6 uh, byproducts uh, from these flower bacteria cells as a simple example. You can go into m much, uh, uh, you can go into other ones such as the peacock, uh, the classic example of the peacock changing feathers for mating, or the Galapagos Islands finches. They are all modern examples, and uh, they will all be pretty much accepted. This nylon 6 example just aims to show you that natural selection is possible and it's been happening everywhere. And even in modern times, since bacteria reproduces really fast, nylon 6, the byproducts, were actually being, uh, were actually, the, the flavor bacterium was actually able to adapt or uh, be able to use natural selection to get a strain of bacterium which could process these nylon 6 byproducts. And at the end, being successful, these strains succeeded and, uh, you know, uh, thrived. Okay, so overall, that's all I wanted to explain in this, and that should conclude the dot point. Uh, hopefully, I've covered what is natural selection and a modern example of how it relates to natural selection. Okay, thank you.